I think with the colour, the trim, the wheels, the engine, I don't think there's nothing else you could do to this car to make it any better. I mean, I think if, you, if I try to push it any further, um, I think I'll just spoil it. I think it's at that point where, in my eye, the car is perfect. Okay, my name's Tony and this is my 1986 BMW E30 Top Cabriolet Bauer. Got into cars early, 16, 17 years of age. Wasn't really into BMWs at the time. And then it's sort of like the E30s had just come out and they sort of took me and that's it. And ever since I've, well, since then, I've always had an E30 in my life. Always, never been without. Wow, how many E30s have I had? 40, 50 cars. At one point, I think I had seven. Um, I wasn't looking for a Bauer, but I always had an eye for an E30. I clocked this on the car site, tucked over the back. So when I spoke to the owner, done a deal with the guy that day, went back the following day, picked it up and brought it back. Um, all intentions of just restoring it. It didn't look too bad from a distance until you got up close and started prodding around and all that. And obviously, being an E30, when the, the cars were worthless, people just bodged them and lashed them to get through MOTs and stuff. Floor was solid, chassis was good. Uh, it was the usual rear arches, the rear panel, inner rear wings and the sill panels. So I replaced all of those, uh, put a new one in it as well. And I think one second hand door, because one of the doors was a little bit rusty. Um, yeah, so done that and um, decided to keep the original colour, because uh, obviously I didn't want to change it that much, wanted to keep it uh, sort of looking standard-ish. I didn't want to do a water-based paint on this car. So what we'd done, we'd done a spray out in the water base with the lacquer. We scanned that spray out, then got another formula to do it in a solid color as the car should have been. So that was it. So it was done in a solid color. Um, and then we also lacquered it as well to try and get the, the paint right up there as well. You know what I mean? But three years into using the car, you, you know, so if you, whack, you, you you try your best not to scratch it. And, and the paint was starting to dull a bit. And I, as much as I was polishing the life out of it. So I met some guys who have got a company called Details Details. It went to them to be detailed and it was with them for just over a week. And they'd done what they'd done to it and they ceramic coated it. And when I went to pick the car up, I was shocked. I thought that car was as good as it could get. And it was, they, they opened his doors up and my jaw just hit the floor, absolutely hit the floor. And then I took it to a show that weekend and straight away, best paint. The car originally had a M10 uh, fuel injected 1.8. Um, that wasn't really enough for me because I was just so used to B25s. So I found a package, a complete package to build a 2.7, in, uh, including like a nutty camshaft and this, that and the other, a BTB exhaust manifold. So I bought the package, it was all in bits, so I had to build the engine from scratch, which I did. So then I had the 2.7 and I put an enlarged throttle body on it. But as time progressed, I just wanted to change the engine up a little bit. Went down a route of, Throttle bodies, an expensive route, I'd to say that, but it's the best thing I ever did to it. So I've got, like, obviously, everyone says Gen V throttle bodies, Emerald K6 standalone management on it now. Totally, totally different car, totally different car. Um, the noise, the things, obviously, with the throttle bodies is just like you're like a little kid. You know what I mean? It's a tunnel, you drop in two gears, you floor it, you know what I mean? And then I should be too old for that, but nah, you never grow up when it comes to that. So it's had no valve or head work done to it because um, the people I speak to say there's not a great gain from doing it. It's got a pipe of cam in it, a uh, 289 duration on inlet and exhaust. So it's the pistons are just missing them valves. It's got a uh, stainless steel full system on it, the BTB exhaust manifold. It was mapped by Emerald. That was a scary day because they had it on the rolling road for six hours and it was just getting hammered. And the guy who was mapping it, John, did say, if it doesn't blow up now, 
it will never blow up. And we took it to 6,300 revs and we was up to 220, 220.3 brake. And I said, that's enough, no more. Just give the car a rest. It, the car goes off the clock on the speedo. It just goes. Once it gets to 70, uh, the, the cam kicks in at about three grand and it just launches and it just goes and goes and, and just keeps going until the point you go, oh, I don't want to do no more, back off. <laughs> Exterior, yeah, like I said, the, the car was pretty rough. Uh, it was all one colour, um, but I, I went completely balls out on it, stripped it right out. Um, I've done all the underneath, that's all been done. Even like I've colour coded all the front and rear inner arches and that because obviously I've replaced the inner rears, resealed everything, re stone guarded everything. Uh, even down to the engine bay, stripped all the engine bay out, painted all the engine bay, uh, all in the boot area because I'd replaced the rear panel and the boot area was all stripped. So I painted everything in the boot as well. That was all completely done. I rolled the arches, obviously because they were brand new arches, so I thought, because I hadn't decided on wheel sizes or spec, so I thought, whoa, they're brand new before it got painted. So they're rolled out so it could take quite a wide wheel on that. The interior, was, if I remember rightly, because it was a while ago now, was like a brown cloth comfort seats, which were trashed. Uh, my mate was breaking his 325i two door at the time, which had leather interior, which is in really good condition. And um, obviously the interior for a bow is exactly the same as a two door car, because that's how they started life. So I bought his interior um, and had it all recolonized and then a year down the line, the winter come, and I was sort of at the stage thinking, well, winter's here, I've got to do something to the car to improve it. So I pulled the seats out, took them to be trim, and recovered in new black leather, so they all got done. And then all the door cards I had done the following year, they all got replaced. The roof the, that was mullered, the back window was all so I, I, that all renewed, that was all brand new, so that was done back to the exterior again and it's the same as what I do as well. All the, the headlights, brand new from BMW, they were the last set of clusters for an early chromey. They're no longer available, I've got the last ones. Spotlights, brand new, I bought them from, because they're not available from BMW, but Euro car parts were doing them. Like, and they are the genuine batch and so bought them. Uh, I know they're no longer available so I got in just at the right time. Car originally come on the bottle top, uh, normal 14 inch bottle top wheels. And I see a lot in Europe and South Africa, they do this, these splits and all that. And I thought they look quite good because they look like a period wheel that actually like should be on the car. They contacted CNR Custom Wheels, um, spoke to them and they said, yeah, bang, no problem. Six weeks later, the wheels arrived in the UK to their contact in Watford. I went and picked them up. And then, uh, yeah, banged them on. I think they really suit the car. If I could have gone for a 16 instead of a 17, I would have gone for a 16. Because with the 17 inch wheel, you're getting less rubber. And because the car's bagged as well, which gives you a harsh ride, I, I don't want to be brutally honest, it's not the best drive in the world. It really isn't. Because you've got no give on that sidewall. You've got no give on, yeah, but if I'd come down to a 16 and a bit more tire, the ride would be spot on, spot on, you know what I mean? Originally, I had a Tech One steering wheel on it. Um, then I changed it over to an Alpina black stitch leather one. But then a friend of mine had the Alpina wooden gear knob. So I bought that, which didn't look right with the steering wheel. So I went on eBay and this steering wheel had been on there for ages. And the guy wanted, to, like, I think it was like 250 quid for it or something like that. So I made a cheeky bid on it, offered him 180 quid for it, and he went for it. Some people say mm, they're not too sure, but I think it sort of breaks up the black, because everything's black inside. I like it. I, I think it suits the car, you know what I mean? So it's got matching now, steering wheel and gear knob. So when I originally bought the car, all it had was a couple of speakers and kit plates at the front, um, which you couldn't hear. It's it just terrible. So I spoke to Cam. And so we've gone for, we've, it's now got four mids in it. It's got four tweeters. I've got two 10 inch subs. 
in the boot and like, it, it, it's not the car you park up at Tesco's in the middle of the night at a car meet and everyone's dancing around it. It's crisp, clear, quality sound, you know what I mean? Car purpose at the moment is just looking pretty in the garage because I've got another car um, which is sort of taken over. I've been driving the car for five years, uh, been to Europe in it, it's done really well, magazine. It's been in calendars, it's far beyond gone where I thought it would go. Um, and it's really done me proud. So it's having a year off. And then next year, I want to alternate cars that I take out. So where my 2002 has done really well, um, I won't take it to that. Again, I want to take this back out again. So because people do ask, people do, they know the car, they go, where's the E30? Where's the E30? So it's having a rest. It's sitting in the dryer. His battery's just been tickled, like keep charge and that. The car's probably done every show known to man in the UK, barring a couple right up north because I was all like, well, I'm not driving up north because it'll be raining and I'm not driving my car in the rain. It's had a feature in Performance BMW magazine. It's won a shed load of trophies. Summoning trophies, I was really shocked at. I, I, I honestly really shocked. I think there's two two trophies it's won. One was at Beamer Fest, uh, where there's just thousands, three, four thousand BMWs at Beamer Fest, and it won Best Classic. And I just, and I was amazed by that. Um, and then also at tracks on a Performance BMW club stand where I was surrounded by these awesome cars, just put mine to shame. They're proper modified cars. All right, it's modified, but it's, it's, it's not out there. It still looks like a standard car until you open up the bonnet and then if you see the suspension drop and the air ride and stuff like that, and obviously the wheels. Um, and it won Pride of Ownership Award there. It was the only trophy to be had and it won it and I was amazed at that. It's not all about trophies, I mean, it's nice. Nice to get a trophy, it really is, because uh, it's good for the history of the car. I'm building the history. No history come with this car. I didn't know where it come from, anything like that. So I'm creating this car's history. So, and, and yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what it's done. I really am. Being a Bauer, and it's, it, it's the frowned upon E30 in the wider picture. You know what I mean? There's a very select few, special people who like Bowers, do you know what I mean? And I do like an obs obscure car and I like to just be away from the crowd with my cars. So it, it got to the point where anything was asked about a Bauer on the socials, they would message me, purely because of this car. I might not have had the answer, but because that everyone knew that, and I call it whoring the car out. I, I whore this car out over the socials to the point where people are going, no more, no more of this car. And I go, here you go, there's another post. <laughs> but it, it, yeah, and, and it's made me a lot of friends. It's made, and, and there's a lot of guys in the E30 family have gone, we never liked a Bauer until we see this one, because what you've done to this car, really, it, it, it's, it was good. It, it made the car attractive, and it made people, it drew people to it. I mean, so, yeah. The longest drive I've done in it um, is, it is probably gonna be the Netherlands. Um, but working it out, mileage, I, and I, it quite surprised me because I filled the tank here in the UK, uh, went to the Channel Crossing, into France, so from France into Belgium, into the Netherlands. By the time we got back to the Netherlands, uh, to the hotel, I still had a quarter tank of fuel. I was amazed. Yeah, yeah, it's milked up. And I think it's only like two, it was like 260 miles, something like that. I think I've gone through, like, gone from here, travelled through two other countries, get to another country, and I've only done 260 miles. Yeah, but, um, but the first time I took it to Beaming Fest, I had a few little issues because it was a new build. So, Driving down the M2 towards Dark Crossing, Lauren found me, threw a stone up, put a big chip on my windscreen. So that was issue number one. And I was like, wow. So we carried on. Once we got to the Netherlands, was en route, was in Belgium, and we was in 
Antwerp, is it, is it, well, is Antwerp in Belgium? Is it? I think so, I think, I think so. And we all got split up. As much as I go abroad on holidays, I never drive abroad, yeah? That was the first time I'd ever driven abroad and I was on my own. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> So I've had to put the postcode of the hotel into my phone. It was like 32 degrees. It was right, the roof down. I'm like, also, my phone's overheated. I don't know where I'm going. So I'm just driving around in Belgium and all that. Anyway, phone's kicked in. I've got into Holland. I'm on the road. So I've got about three or four miles from the hotel where I'm meant to be. And I stopped because they put this bridge up because the canal's got to go through and all that. And it was a funny smell, like oil. I thought, What's that smell? All right, anyway, so bridge come down, pulled up, pulled over. The fan had gone through the top hose. So I phoned the guys, a few of them were at the hotel, managed to clean it up, put loads of gaffer tape around the hose, put some water in it, got to the hotel. And this is how good the E30 community is. So I'm stuck now at the hotel. No, but I've got a, a mismatch of facelift and pre-facelift hoses. So I put on E30 zone. I'm in Holland, I'm stuck, I need this hose. Straight away, a guy contacted me, yeah, he said, I'm going BMW tomorrow, I know exactly what hose you want, I'll get it for you. I thought, wow, I said, give me your paper. I said, no, I'm paying you when I, when he said, tell me where you are. I told him where I was. So, but another guy brought the hose, he come down, I think the hose was like 28 euros or something like that. So I'll give him 50 euros, he going to give me change. Said, no. You keep the 50 euros. He goes, no, no, no. I said, no, please go and have a beer on me. You've done it. So I bang the hose on, job done. The day before Beamer Fest, got a friend over in Holland called uh, Ad. He has a barbecue for all the guys with the classic cars before Beamer Fest on a massive farm. It's brilliant. So we've all gone there. Now, this has got a sound system in it as well. So I've opened the boot up, probably. But I leave the car running so I just kill the battery. So we're all sitting on the floor around it. My mate John's gone. You got oil dripping out of your car. And I'm like, what? Looked down, I thought, oh no. So the oil cooler housing has got a valve on the bottom and it was dripping. Drip, drip, drip. And I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm just going to have to live with it until we get back to the UK. So, yeah, so that was my three issues. But since that journey, this car has never, ever leapt down or had another fall. That's it, it's standard. When I originally bought the car, I was with the wife and I said, I'll restore this car and you can drive it. But obviously as I was moving along and doing the bits and I thought, oh, I'm going to put a bigger engine in, I'm going to put these wheels on and all that. Um, and all of a sudden I've sent the V5 off and it come back in my name, not her name. Yeah, and she's got this thing as the, when we go to shows or see people, she goes, that was meant to be my car, that was. <laughs> But my wife loves a curb when she's out driving. These wheels are not for a woman who loves a curb. So, no, she, and she's never driven it. She was on the insurance, she's not on it anymore. <laughs>Be honest, it, it, it does drive very well. Obviously, I said before about obviously with the 17 inch wheels, that's a little bit harsh and all that. It's even though I've installed like a big sound system in it and stuff like that, when I'm driving it, I don't have it on because all I'm listening to is the engine because the, the sound and I, I'm just purposely always low gear in it and stuff and booting it. And you know what I mean. If it didn't have those on, my fuel consumption would probably be a lot better, a lot better. But um, it drives great. It, it hasn't got power steering. Um, everyone's gone, what, no power steering? But surprisingly, even parking the car, it's not hard work turning the steering and stuff. Just the way it's, the, the, the rack is geared. Um, yeah, it, it's fine. But the car is, it's bone basics because it, it hasn't got central locking. Uh, obviously no power steering, like I just said. Um, it hasn't got power windows either. The only power thing it's got is the engine and the mirrors, and that is it. That is the only bits, yeah. But um, I love it, I just love it. it it's just like, I suppose, it's, it's less things to break and leak, isn't it? So, 